fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Whenever men gathered around frontier campfires, stories were told of the masked rider of the plains. Astride his great horse, Silver, he fought crime through the length and breadth of seven states. His efforts in the cause of justice were tireless. And although history does not record his deeds, he will always be remembered as the man who did most to bring law and order to the West. Now return with us once more to those thrilling days when the West was young and adventure was found at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Someone's waiting for us near Big Ben! I know, Silver! Oh! Trouble threatened in the vicinity of Big Bend when an eastern company basing its claim on an old land grant, attempted to take over the homes and property of settlers in the disputed territory. As our first scene opens, we see the masked man and his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, approaching town on their way to the stagecoach station. We should be in town by the time the stage gets in from Kenwood, Tonto. Uh, I'm hoping the government representative will be on it. Him plenty late. It was a good idea for the government to decide the argument between the settlers and the Eastern Company. But if they don't learn the decision soon, the settlers may sell out to Randolph. Who, Randolph? He's the agent of the syndicate, Tonto. He's shrewd and not too honest. Oh. He's been trying to buy out the settlers for a tenth of what their property is worth. Mm, that plenty bad thing. He has most of the men convinced the government will decide against them. They're becoming discouraged and willing to sell for what they can get. Uh-huh. Amos Drake is the leader of the landowners. If it weren't for him, most of the land would have been sold to the syndicate already. Why, fella from East, not come. I don't know what's delaying him. Word was received by Pony Express that the decision had been made, and a representative was being sent here to announce it. Why them do that? The government doesn't want the decision known until their man arrives. Hmm, that's strange. No, whichever way the decision goes, there's apt to be trouble. It's wise to have a man from Washington here with authority to deal with it. Oh, there's the stagecoach station now, Tonto. Um, there's plenty of feller there. Everybody's hoping that the government man will come on today's stage. Ooh, that big feller wear black coat. That's Philip Randolph, the syndicate's man. The name is Drake is standing beside him. Oh. We'll stay behind the station here, Tonto. Uh, they'll not see us here. Oh, Silver. Oh, oh white feller. Oh. I want to watch Randolph. I doubt that he'll be willing to settle the argument honestly. Uh, that's right. There comes the stage now. We'll soon know if the man from Washington is on it. There comes the stage. Old Sammy sure getting speed out of them horses. Maybe he's bringing in another feed. They were all open, sir. Hold on, Sammy. Hold on. Hold 
Ain't you got no passenger today, Sam? Nary one, Amos. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you'll have to wait a while longer, Amos. Go ahead and laugh, Ted. Wretch you, Randolph. This just gives you that much more time to try to get folks to sell out for nothing. <laughs> I won't argue with you. There's John Perry, manager of the stage line. Maybe he's got some word what's causing the delay. Howdy, Amos. Howdy, John. I was just wondering if... Gee, what's making you look so downright sour? Well, Amos, I just learned something today that sort of upset me. It, uh, it ain't about that fella from Washington, is it? Nope, it's Sam. Huh? What's the matter with Sam? Him and me have been friends since uh, he first took to driving the stage for you. I reckon you'll find out soon enough. Sam, climb down over that stage. I want to talk to you. Sure thing, Mr. Perry. Uh, uh, what's on your mind? I'm going to ask you a kind of funny question, Sam. Yeah? Just tell me where the baggage scales are sitting. But what's Go the... on, tell me. <laughs> Shucks, they're right over there by the door like they always is. Well, they ain't. They was moved around back today. Leaping lizard, Sam. Are you plumb blind? Why... That's just it, Amos. Sam is blind. It can't be. Mr. Perry's right, Amos. I... I reckon there ain't no use me pretending anymore. Well, uh, I'll be doggone. I've been wondering why Sam's wife took to walking down here to meet him lately. But I never know till Joe Lieber told me today. It was because Sam can't see no more. It was Joe that told you, Mr. Perry? Uh-huh. That doggone... Sam, how in Tunky could you fool us like this? Well, I've been losing my sight for near a year, Amos. But it ain't been but for the last week or so that I couldn't see at all. But how could you drive the horses? Shucks. Blackie and Nick and the rest of them don't need nobody to drive them. They savvy just as much about their job as I do. But uh, Besides, I, I, I drove them same horses for years. Why, we savvy each other just like they was humans almost. Ain't that right, Blackie, old fellow, huh? <laughs> you see? I'm sorry, Sam. You've been a good man. But I'll have to let you go. I I knew it'd have to come, Mr. Perry. It'll take me a day or two to figure what you got coming. Then you can drop back here and I'll pay you off. But, Mr. Perry, ain't there something I can do around the station or the horses? Why, driving the stage has been my whole life. I, I wouldn't want to live away from the business. I'm sorry. Who, uh, who's taking my place? I reckon I'll give Joe Libra a chance at it. That crook? No, that ain't no way to talk. But I... Besides, it was Mr. Randolph that gave him a recommend. Randolph? He's the worst crook in these parts. You shouldn't feel that way, Amos, just because he's working for the syndicate. <laughs> Sam, you can help unhitch the horses right now. But tomorrow, Joe will be driving the stage. All right, Mr. Perry. Hold on, Sam. Yeah? I've been wondering what could have happened to that government fella. You don't figure he could have got sick or something and is laying up in Kenwood, do you? Ain't heard nothing like that. Well, I'll be walking back uptown then, I guess. So long. Bye, Amos. All right, fellas. Let me through. I got the seat of the horses. Get back out of the way, fellas. Hello. I wonder if Amos could be right. Stand easy, sir. What? What that? It's possible that the man from Washington is ill. That would explain his delay. Oh, it's worth investigating. Come on, Toto. What we do? We're riding to Kenwood to see what we can learn. Come on, sir. Get him a point, fella. The following day, Joe Lieber drove the stage to the town of Kenwood. There he picked up a single passenger, a tall Easterner for the return trip to Big Bend. We see Joe now as he speaks to the guard while guiding the horses over the rough trail to town. Well, the fellow we got inside is a government hombre, all right, Pete. You sure of that? There yeah, can't be no doubt of it. Randolph told me just what he looked like. How'd Randolph find out about it? <laughs> the same way he found out the government decided to get his company. Yeah? <laughs> And this here Eastern Senegal is a powerful, smart outfit. They have fellas in Washington spying for them. Uh huh. But what do you think? Uh, just a second. Uh, this is where we're leaving the trail now. Easy there, you critters. I blast you. Quit trying to stay on the road. Hey, Savvy's doing well. This ain't the way to go. Yeah, I'll teach you. Take that. Get along with you. Get up there. Ah. Yeah. I'll show them who boss. This whole trail ain't been used for a long spell. So we can get through? Yeah, we'll. Make it all right. Wonder if that government fella's got any notion we ain't taking him to town. Well, why should he? 
Ain't never been this way before. This is mighty risky business. Yeah, Mr. Randolph's pain is good, ain't he? Yeah, but just All the same. we gotta do is keep him away from town long enough so Mr. Randolph can buy up that land. Or the settlers can find out they won. You figure them south? Sure they will. Most of them don't reckon they stand a chance against the syndicate. Uh-huh. So they'll sell now. Here and they won't be able to get nothing at all later on. The boss is your penny spot. Yeah, uh, he is that. How much farther we got to go? Oh, not far. Just this side of the old bridge up ahead. You want to stay at the old cabin? Yeah, there ain't no better place to hide out. Nobody ever comes this way no more. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Randolph will let us know when we can let the government tell to go. Then he'll pay us off and we'll clear out of this part of the country. Ain't Randolph taking big chances? Oh, shucks. Ain't no one can prove he had anything to do with it. What are we going to do with the stage? Hey, you just leave that to me. Well, there's just one thing I won't stand for. There ain't going to be no killing. You're blamed right, Jerry. I don't hanker to get my neck in a noose any more than you do. All right, get along there, Blaster. It was Randolph found out about Sam going blind, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, he told me and I told Mr. Perry. So I got the job driver. Hadn't you better rein up? Yeah. And just as soon as I do, you hop down and cover that fellow with a gun. I'll take care of him. Uh, this will do all right. Pull up, guy. Pull, pull, bless you. Pull there, boy. Pull, pull. I'll get him all right. Uh, I'll be right with you. Stopping here. Climb out of there, mister. Come on. But we got you covered. What the? Get out of where we drill you. Is this a holdup? Never mind what it is. Ice your hands. You men can be jailed for this. Uh-huh. But we gotta be cats first. I'll see. Shut them. up. Pete, hold them horses a second. Yeah. <laughs> now I'll show you what I had in mind to do with the stage. I still don't savvy what you're You watch. You blamed right I am. Uh, just hold them horses. Are you crazy, man? Yeah. I reckon that'll do it. Now, hand me the whip, Pete. Right here. Here you are. Yeah, good. Now, just get them horses started back for town. Well, what are you going Get along with you. Get up. Get up there. Go on. Get along with you. Oh, what places did you do that for, Joe? Them horses will head right for Big Bend. Yeah, but what <laughs> good work. <laughs> and when they get there, everybody will figure we was held up and shot. But all the time, we'll be right over there in the cabin. And this fella here is staying right with us. <laughs> in town, the usual crowd of people waiting for the stage was increased when word was spread that the stage was unaccountably late. We see the district manager, John Perry, as he attempts to answer their worried questions. Stage is almost a half an hour late already, John. Figure there could have been an accident. Weren't never late when Sam was driving. Can't you tell us what's happened? Quiet, folks. Quiet. How do you figure I know any more about it than the rest of you? But what if the government feller was on the stage today? No one's got any call to be worried. But look here. Joe's I... a new man on the stage. You can't expect him to do so well right off. <laughs> Amos, you might as well forget about that fellow from Washington. It won't matter if he does come. Bless you, Randolph. I've called a meeting for tonight. Everybody who wants to sail while they have the chance will be there. He ain't got no right to do that. There's nothing to stop me. You... There's the stage. Yeah, yeah. I don't see no driver. What's happened to Joe? Why, golly. Them horses are coming in with them sails. There's been trouble. Grab them horses. Stop them. I'll get them. Oh, oh, oh. There. You find something, Amos? Then a hold up. There's bullet holes for stage. Maybe Joe and Peter are killed. I wonder if the government feller was along. I don't know, but something's got to be done. Somebody get the sheriff. We got to figure this thing out. The curtain falls on the first act of our thrilling Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. An eastern syndicate claimed that an old land grant gave them title to property owned by settlers in the country around Big Bend. The government decided in favor of the settlers and sent a representative to announce the decision in person. But Randolph, the agent of the syndicate, learned of the decision and arranged for the representative to be kidnapped and held while he bought up the settlers' land before they could learn they had won their case. As our second act opens, we see the Lone Ranger and Tonto that same day in their small, well-concealed camp in the hills. Tonto, I saw the stage when it arrived in town. Uh It was empty, and there were bullet holes in it. Might be that those shots were just fired as a warning to make the stage stop. Mm, Maybe that right. But what I can't understand is why outlaws would have held up the stage. If not have cash. It held nothing of value. And I wonder... What you think? When we were in Kenwood, we saw a man get on the stage who looked like an Easterner. Oh, him from East, all right. And he might have been the man sent here from Washington. Uh I'm sorry now that we didn't follow the stage when it started back for Big Bend. But I never thought anything would happen to it. Oh. I was anxious to arrive in town first. Uh, Tonto learned plenty. You have? A fellow named Joe worked for Randolph long time past. Joe Lieber once worked for Randolph? Not right. That's something I never knew before. And Joe, plenty bad feller. Him gunman. And Joe was driving the stage today. Uh, here, Silver. Uh, what do you do? We're riding to town, Kimosaki. You white feller. We've got to find out what's happened to the passenger on the stage. Yep. That's right. Randolph has called a meeting of the settlers for tonight. He's in a hurry to buy their land. Tonto know that. Most of them will sell. And if the government man isn't found, it may be that they're selling land they could keep. Uh, but I have a plan we'll try. What that? We're going to call an old Sam Lennox. Come on, Get Silver. Get him up, white fella. Shortly after the masked man and Tonto started for town, Sam Lennox, the blind ex-stage driver, made his way to the office of John Perry, the manager of the stage line. It is early evening as we see Sam enter the office, closing the door behind him. Evening, Sam. Howdy, Mr. Perry. I come for my money. Uh Uh-huh. Here, let me help you to a chair. I don't need no help. Shucks, I know this office like was the inside of my hand. Yep, I reckon you do at that. Now, uh, about my pay. It's right here. But first, I got some news I'd like to tell you. Yeah? It's right good news for me. Well, now, I'm glad to hear that. But, uh, but maybe things being so tough for you, I shouldn't have mentioned it. You've always been a friend of mine, Mr. Perry, and I don't ever expect to see the day when I'll be sorry for my friend's good fortune. Sam, I just got word I'm going to be made manager of the whole division. That's fine. Of course, it'll mean I'll have to move to Kenwood. Then, uh, then you'll have to give somebody your job here. That's right. Have you got anybody in mind? Oh, I don't know. I was figuring on giving it to Joe Lieber. You was. But now, if he's been killed, I'll have to find somebody else. Ain't there been no word yet? Not a blame thing. The sheriff took a posse and rode to Kenwood. But he never seen no sign of outlaws or Joe either. That's a funny thing. All he found out was they had a passenger. And now the passenger's gone too. Well, the sheriff is going out to look for him again tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Perry. Yeah? You, you wouldn't give me that job you were speaking of, would you? Now, Sam, you know as much as I'd like to, it couldn't be done. Maybe I couldn't drive the stage no more, but I wouldn't have to be able to see to do the work here in the office. I'm sorry, Sam. There isn't a chance of it. Well, I I just figured it wouldn't do no harm to ask. Something else will turn up for you, Sam. I reckon. You're going to Randolph's meeting tonight? I don't know. Just a minute. A masked man. I want to talk to you men. You're an outlaw. Get out of here. I'm not an outlaw. Then what do you have time to waste explaining? I can't see you, stranger. But you don't sound to me like an outlaw. What's your game? I want Sam's help. My help? What do you want with a blind fella? Sam, I've heard that you know this country between here and Kenwood as well as any man in this district. As well? I know it a heap better. Can you think of any places where a man might be hidden safely? I can think of a dozen of them. Some place not too far from the stage trail? I sure can, but what... The man that got on the stage today at Kenwood was an Easterner. Now, look here. You're an outlaw, and we don't want no truck with you. I'll let him talk, Mr. Perry. I got a notion he's got something important in mind. And it's possible that the passenger was the man you've been expecting from Washington. By golly, he might have been. I've learned from Tonto that Joe Lieber once worked for Randolph. Who told him that? 
Say, I'd heard something like that myself. You might still be working for him. How do you mean? Randall seems to be in a big hurry to buy the settler's land. Well, he'll likely get most of it tonight. Perhaps Joe wasn't shot. Perhaps he's holding his passenger a prisoner. How do you know that? I don't know it, but I want to find out. But I... Will you help me? I sure do anything I can. You'll have to but drive the... the stage. Hold on there. Sam can't do that. That's for Sam to say. Mr. Perry, I could have drove that stage for years with my eyes tight closed. I reckon being blind ain't no different. I want you to lead Tato and me to all the good hideouts you know close to the stage trail. I can do just that. With them horses, I could go anywhere. Well, I say you ain't gonna do it. Now, listen, Mr. Perry. The stage is company property, and I can't take no chances letting a blind fellow wreck it. It's more important for the settlers to save their land. You can't have the stage. Sam, will you take a chance? Will you drive the stage anyhow? You figure we can prove Joe Lieber a crook? I believe we can. Then I'm with you, stranger. Good. I was sure you'd agree. The stage is outside. It ain't. The horses are in the stable. Tyler and hitched up the horses, and the stage is ready to go. And so am I. Come on. Hey, wait. I'll have the law on both of you. Wait, I say. Come back here. We'll have to risk that, Perry. Sam, come back here. You've gone loco. Maybe I have, Mr. Perry, but I'm sure enjoying it. Get started, Sam. Tato and I will ride with you. Lester, you'll pay for this. Get up, there, Blackie, old fellow. Get up, there, Nicky. Get along. Come on, on Sylvie. Although blind, Sam handled the heavy stage without difficulty. There was perfect understanding between him and the horses he drove. And while the masked man and Tonto rode on either side, he raced down the trail to Kenwood. Twice, however, he stopped and pointed out a possible hiding place to the Lone Ranger. But both times they were disappointed. Well, we'll just have to try again, friend. No one has been here. What makes you so sure they can't be far from the trail if they're hid? In the first place, the empty stage got into town only 20 minutes late. I hadn't thought of that. And in the second, when they left the stage, they had no horses. They wouldn't have gone far on foot. Then we'll keep on going. How far is the next place you had in mind? It's just a piece up the road. Get up, pal. Get up. Come, come on, on. Come get on. Come on. Now, Sam. I was just thinking they might have gone up the old trail. Yes. Maybe the engine can see the tracks there. Uh, count them. Count them. Look. What's the matter, Black? Be nervous. What is it, old fella? Are you trying to tell me something? <coughs> Doggone, he sure is trying. Me find him track. You did? It go that way. Down the old trail. Maybe this is it, but we haven't a minute to spare. Randall's meeting should be almost ready to start. Get up, Come on, Sam. In town, the meeting called by Randolph got underway. The village hall was crowded with settlers more than half convinced that their only chance to save something from their homes was to sell. We see old Amos Drake as he speaks angrily to the syndic representative. You're a crook, Bill Randolph, and I'd sure give a heap to be able to prove it. Talk all you want to, Amos, but I'm getting down to business. Uh, this is your meeting. I can't stop you. Quiet, everybody. I have something to say. Men, the company I represent has every reason to believe it will win the government's decision. But we wish to act fairly. And the sooner we get possession of the property, the more value we'll have for us. In view of that fact, I have been authorized to offer one dollar an acre to all who are willing to sell at once. One dollar on your give us? It ain't near what the land was. I was ten dollars an acre. We figured you'd give us more than that. Just one moment. You can hold your land if you wish. But I warn you that you receive not one red penny from us when the government hands down its decision. Remember. Remember that one dollar an acre is better than nothing at all. This offer won't be made again. 
So those who wish to sell, step forward. I'll take your names. Don't pay no attention to him, fellas. Hold out till the government feller gets That's here. You can do it, because you've got cash, Amos. We don't aim to lose everything we got. I'll take the dollar so long as I can't get no better. Me too. I'll get what I can. Just step this way. I got it. I know what land each of you owns. I have money here. And Hold I'll... on. Very much, man. Who's the fellow that paid us for doing it? So, what are you doing here? Me and Pete are going to take the blame all by ourselves. You're under arrest, Randy. Oh, yellow Well, they found us. I couldn't help it. You won't do any more talking. He's got a gun. Watch out. Who oh, shot my hand? I only hit your gun, Randolph. Hold him. We got the skunk. Listen to me. This is Mr. Bennett, the man you've been expecting from Washington. The then, you, then you found him after all. Thanks to Sam here. Sam found him? Sometimes blind men can see more than men with eyes. Well, I'll be blasted. Sam tells me you'll soon need a new manager here. Yeah, that's right. Sam would make the best district manager this town ever had. I'll be darned if I don't think you're right. Mr. Perry, you... You really mean you'll give me a chance at it? That's just what I mean, Sam. I think Mr. Bennett has something to say that will interest all of you. Then the government decided that the land rightfully belongs to you. The syndicate's land grant was proved to be a forgery. I knew all the time them fellas was crooked. But all you fellas would have lost your land anyhow. If it hadn't been for the masked fella and Sam here. Oh, it's just I just helped him. But it was him figuring things out and having faith in me that done the trick. Well, the both of you saved our land and fixed it so them polecats would be put in jail. I don't know which one of you did the most of it. And I don't savvy yet how it was done. But we ain't forgetting, no matter what happened. The story you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.